Professional wrestling is a tough job both mentally and physically. It requires expert training and a careful execution of each move. While it's no longer a secret that the fights are choreographed and the winners are predetermined, it still remains dangerous. One wrong move and a wrestler could actually kill his or her opponent. But deaths haven't just occurred in the ring. There are some wrestlers who have actually killed outside of the ring. In this video, we'll be looking at 10 wrestlers who killed someone in real life. Keep watching. Number 10. Brian McGee Brian Michael McGee never made it big as a wrestler, but he made headlines for other reasons. On the 25th of July, 2013, Mr. McGee did the unthinkable when he stabbed his ex-girlfriend to death. He stabbed her right in front of a witness who confirmed the blade struck her torso and neck area. After killing her, he took a picture of her arms covered in blood and used it as his Facebook profile picture. He got a life sentence for his crime, and he is currently serving his time for the rest of his life. Number 9. Jimmy Snuka Everyone loved watching Superfly Jimmy Snuka do his breathtaking top rope leaps. He was definitely a fan favorite back in the day. However, he was accused of murdering his wife. Shortly after his fight on the 10th of May 1983, Snuka called an ambulance to attend to his girlfriend Nancy Argentino, who was badly injured at the time. Too little, too late, as she died from craniocerebral injuries not long after. There were no immediate charges pressed against him, but a default judgment in 1985 found him guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Jimmy Snuka died in 2017. Number 8. Akatoshi Saito New Japan Pro Wrestling, or NJPW, was Japan's version of the WWE. They had many talented wrestlers, and one of them was Akitoshi Saito. Another major star on the NJPW roster was Mitsuhara Misawa, who the fans loved very much. However, his life was cut short during a match with Saito. On the 13th of January 2009, Saito executed a high-angle backdrop suplex on Misawa, which led to a spinal injury. He was rushed to the hospital where he was later pronounced dead. Number 7. Jose Gonzalez Bruiser Brody, who was a popular wrestler on different wrestling promotions across the world, lost his life at the hands of another wrestler, Jose Gonzalez. This happened way back in 1989. Gonzalez got into a backstage argument with Brody, which led to a fight. Sadly, Gonzalez stabbed Brody with a knife, and that was the end for the bruiser. Gonzalez was arrested and tried, but the jury ruled that he acted in self-defense. He walked away a free man and continued to wrestle until 2006. Tony Atlas, who was also a wrestler, witnessed the whole thing. Number 6. Verne Gain in the very early days, Verne Gain was like the LeBron James of wrestling. He was so popular that every wrestling fan's dream was to see him perform live. Besides his success in the ring, he also made a name for himself outside the ring as the owner of the now defunct American Wrestling Association. In 2009, Gain was in the news again, but this time for the wrong reasons. He got into a fight with his nursing home roommate, Helmut Gutman who he body slammed hard into the floor. This caused Gutman several complications, which eventually led to his death a month after. The death was ruled as a homicide, but Gain wasn't charged because he suffered from dementia. Number 5. The Great Kali Many fans will remember The Great Kali for his size and rugged-looking face. Not so much for his wrestling ability, as he was considered one of the worst talents in WWE history. He somehow managed to win the WWE Heavyweight title, but his success was short-lived. If you thought his stint in the WWE was terrible, then you have no idea how bad his time in All Pro Wrestling was. In 2001, Kali had a match with fellow APW wrestler Brian Ong, and that was to be Ong's very last fight. Ong already suffered a concussion during the bout before Kali hit him with two flapjacks. This landed Ong in the hospital, where he died shortly after. APW were hit with a lawsuit by Ong's family, and they were awarded $1.3 million in compensation. Number 4. New Jack New Jack is considered to be one of the most dangerous and unsafe wrestlers in the world. 
Most wrestlers don't like working with him due to his reputation for taking too many injury-causing risks. He was also known for using forks to soften up his own head so that he could bleed in the ring when he gets hit. One thing many people don't know about New Jack is that he used to be a bounty hunter, and he has four homicides to his credit. Four! In 2004, New Jack was booked to fight William Lane. During the match, Jack grabbed a metal blade and stabbed Lane 14 times. In 1996, New Jack severely bladed 17-year-old Mass Transit in the ring, and this led to two damaged arteries. Mass Transit was an untrained wrestler who decided to participate in the match. Mass Transit passed out in a pool of his own blood and required urgent medical attention. He survived that day, but died a few years after due to several complications from his severed arteries. Number 3. Ox Baker Two professional wrestlers died at the hands of Ox Baker. He had a finisher called the Heart Punch, which killed both wrestlers. The first was in 1971 during a tag team match. He delivered the Heart Punch to Alberto Torres, who died three days later due to internal injuries caused by the punch. The following year, Baker faced Ray Gunkel, who also took the heart punch. Although Gunkel won the match, he died shortly after in the locker room. Ox Baker was never charged for their deaths, being that the acts were unintentional. Number 2. Scott Hall Popularly known as Razor Raymond, Scott Hall was one of the biggest WWE stars in the 90s. But long before he became famous for hitting opponents with his Razor's Edge finisher, Hall had killed a man. The incident took place in 1983, when he got into a fight with a man outside a nightclub. The man pulled out a gun and tried to shoot Hall, but he was quick enough to grab the gun. Hall didn't stop there. He pointed the gun at the man and shot him to death. He wasn't charged for murder, as he acted in self-defense. Number 1. Chris Benoit Chris Benoit's story is a very sad one. He is considered to be one of the greatest and most technical wrestlers of all time, but the way his life ended was nothing short of tragic. After his very good friend Eddie Guerrero passed away in the ring, Benoit was never himself again. Considered to be the greatest tragedy in WWE history, he took his own life in 2007. What made it worse was that he first killed his wife and young son in their home before committing suicide. There you have it, guys. 10 wrestlers who killed someone in real life. Let us have your thoughts via the comments section. We'd be glad to know what you think. Don't forget to like and share this video. And be sure to hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay updated with more great content like this. Thanks for watching.